So we're going to take a look at these two amp clamps that are available. Now a lot of you might be looking at the Hantec option as a cheaper way into using an amp clamp for your oscilloscope measurements, but how does it stack up with the more expensive PicoScope version? Now the Hantec clamp can be had for around $50 to $70 depending on where you find it, and the PicoScope clamp upwards of $100. So is it worth paying the extra money for the PicoScope clamp? Let's take a look at the two. So the two clamps are very similar, okay? They've both got this button on the side to open and close the jaws. What we will notice on the PicoScope clamp is that we've got an arrow pointing in the direction of current flow. So we don't have that on the Hantec scope, but you can assume it's the same, okay? So we're gonna test that out anyway when we connect the clamps up to take some measurements in a minute. Quality-wise, the PicoScope clamp does feel much better built. So, you know, for example, this zero button on the Hantec, it sometimes sticks in, okay, which can be a little bit annoying. You don't get any of that problem with the PicoScope clamp. And the switch itself as well, so it just doesn't feel very positive on the Hantec. It feels a little bit scratchy, okay? Whereas the PicoScope clamp, it clicks into place. They've both got these two readings on here, okay? The PicoScope clamp says 20 amps or 100 millivolts per amp, or 60 amps or 10 millivolts per amp, okay? Now, the Hantec clamp shows it in a slightly different way, but it's exactly the same settings. We've got one millivolt for 10 milliamps or one millivolt for 100 milliamps, but they both work on the same scales. So I've connected them both up now to the PicoScope 2204A. That's the oscilloscope we'll be using for this test. Now, one of the other features you should probably be aware of is the length of the cable. So the Hantec cable, look, can barely reach this ignition coil without getting the oscilloscope up in the engine bay, which, you know, is, is not a major problem. But, you know, the, the cable is only about one meter long at most whereas the PicoScope cable is much, much longer. We can go all the way out here. So something else you need to be aware of with these uh, amp clamps is that they have a zero button on them. And the reason they have a zero button is that over time, the clamp drifts, okay? So the uh, reading which should be zero is no longer zero anymore even if you're not measuring anything. So you can see here on this clip that we did a drift measurement test, okay? I zeroed both of the amp clamps and then we left them for just over five minutes. What you can see is the Hantec clamp drifted, whereas the PicoScope clamp only drifted about 25 milliamps. So for the drift, the PicoScope definitely wins there. Now drift is a problem that you would experience on any amp clamp and there is a way around it if you were gonna do long-term measurements like battery drain. What you could do, for example, is leave the amp clamps at the room temperature for uh, 24 hours and then when you start the measurement, zero the oscilloscope rather than zero in the amp clamp. On the idea being that most of the drift will have already taken place overnight. So one of the limitations for both of these amp clamps is that they don't really fit around most battery cables. So if you're wanting to do um, you know, alternator testing or current draw testing, then you would need to come up with another way of doing it. As you can see there, it just doesn't quite fit around that cable. You know, these aren't recommended for relative compression testing anyway, because they're only good to up to around 60, 65 amps. However, if you really needed to, what you could do is connect up a fuse link. So if you wanted to do a battery drain test, you could connect up a link like that, make sure you use them with the fuse in, and then go around it like this. If you want to see more about parasitic drain testing, then make sure you check out the video we released recently five tips for battery drain testing. Another feature of the PicoScope amp clamp, which is you know, quite a useful one for most people, um, it has an automatic switch off feature. So if you leave it switched on and put it back in your toolbox, like most of us do, at least you're gonna come back to it and there's gonna be half a chance of you having some battery life in to perform the test you need to do. That feature is not available on the Hantec clamp, so prepare for some flat batteries. 
However, you can turn that feature off on the Pico scope clamp should you want to do like a longer term measurement. Um, I think it involves pressing the zero button and turning the amp clamp on. And that toggles between the automatic switch off mode and the normal mode. If you are looking for some training for oscilloscope diagnostics, then head over to Mechanic Mindset where we've got some online videos that can also be viewed in a mobile phone app and um, check out the free taster so you can get an idea of how it is to learn with us. So we've got both of the amp clamps connected up to the electric fan wiring. They're both in the sign direction and they're both switched to uh, 60 amp mode. Okay, so we've got both of these amp clamps connected now. Um, I've put them both onto the 60 amp mode, so the switch all the way up. And now let's set them up in the oscilloscope software. So we're running PicoScope 7 T and M early access. So this is the Pico 7 software you need for your PicoScope 2204A. And if we go to channel A, so channel A has the Hantec clamp connected to it because that's in blue and channel A is blue. So if we just go over to probes, the good thing about this is you can use the same probe settings as the PicoScope clamp. So if we go to 60 amp setting there, and then if we go to channel B and set that one up as well, we're gonna select the exact same settings. So what we can see now is that the PicoScope clamp is slightly higher than the Hantec clamp. So we'll just zero that out. We'll zero the Hantec clamp as well. Again, that may be because I've just put these clamps down next to a warm exhaust pipe and you know temperature can greatly affect the drift of an amp clamp. So, you know, the, the Pico clamp was next to the exhaust and the Hantec one wasn't. Okay, we will also just set both of these to 60 amps. So I've got the Think Tool Master 2 connected up to the car, and what we're gonna do now is activate the electric fan and compare the two uh, waveforms. Okay, so there you have it. You can see that they both went up to a similar current. We were drawing around 15 amps once the fan got up to speed. However, you can see that they're both quite jolty like this, okay? Now that's no fault of the amp clamps, that is down to the oscilloscope itself. This is an 8-bit, which means it only has a limited number of steps to actually recreate curved lines. So that's why we get these steps here. And you can see that they're both around about the same, okay? However, what we can do in this software is add some vertical resolution enhancement. So I'd probably say 9.5 is a good number to use. And we can see now that they're both giving us something a little bit more um, what we might expect from an electric motor. However, we can see that they're both pretty much the same. The Hantec one is probably a little bit higher than the uh, PicoScope one, but it's minimal. And if we actually scroll through to where the motor was starting up, we can actually see we've got those ripples there, and that is the commutators inside the motor as the motor turns. So um, we can actually see there some good detail on the condition of the motor. And I'd say that for both of them there, they are pretty much the same. Again, the PicoScope clamp is a little bit higher. However, at the zero line, they are both still exactly the same. Okay, so now we'll take a measurement on one of the ignition coils on something with a, a smaller current draw. Um, let's switch them both onto the 20 amp mode. So that's 20 amp mode on the PicoScope and one millivolt for 10 milliamps on the Hantex clamp. So let's go to change up the uh, scales. So go back into probes, turn uh, channel A to 20 amps and channel B to 20 amps. Uh, we'll go for a five amp scale on both of them and see how that works. So we'll start with a 20 milliseconds uh, scale there for the time base and trigger, we'll put an automatic trigger on and we'll just set it at about half an amp. So looking at the coils, we've got a green wire on all of those coils. It would be easy to assume that that was the power supply. So let's put that one around there and we'll face it the same way. 
and put that one around there. And let's start the engine. We've gone over range there, so let's take it up to 10 amps. Okay, so we set the scale too low there and shifted it up to 10 amps, but you can see here now that actually they're both pretty much the same. You can see that the blue Hamtech clamp is reading a little bit higher, only a tiny bit. Let's see how much it is reading higher. 400 milliamps, so 0.4 amps. That is quite a bit, but I suppose for what you would be using it for in this scenario, i.e. checking for any shorts at the beginning of the current ramp, it works absolutely fine. We will save these waveforms if you want to go and check them out for yourself. And um, They are now part of our free access to the Mechanic Mindset training website where you can go in there, check out the video again and download the PicoScope waveform files. Verdict then really is, it depends on how much budget you've got. I think if you can afford the extra money to get the PicoScope clamp, I would go for that. For the pure fact that it feels like it's got more quality and um, the cable is much longer you know the short cable is quite uh, a nuisance on the on the hand tech scope and you've got the automatic switch off feature which is always going to be quite useful um, for those frustrating times when you get the clamp out and it's switched on and the lights off 